wherever there was a workaholic among painters, everything I've heard about Matisse, he was a real workaholic. He really was never satisfied pushing and pushing and pushing. Matisse, in fear and trembling, is thinking of, 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 of Jacques Dole. He's doing sketch from Rubens. He's doing some superb drawing from, from the hands in the grid wall. His pain is doomed. I mean, he's not screwing off and saying, oh, look, 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 a series of Matisse is in the station of the cross. And he's really working at it. And it's a superb drawing. And they were superb, these black and white tiles. And here, here's a man on Matisse everyone loves. So why should they? Fantastic paper. Him, cool. He's, he's just about a man. I mean, there was a painter who was a uh, a dean. Was it a dean or a chairman? I always forget what it was. Chairman. Chairman at Yale when I was teaching there. And and uh, uh, I never really saw eye to eye with this painter. Then when I left the, the Yale graduate school where I was teaching, actually more as chairman. I bumped into him again at, at Cooper Union. I was teaching Cooper Union. He was teaching Cooper Union. And I had a book of rules under my arm. And this, this guy says to me, Oh, you like, you like rules, all that religion, uh, expressionism, religion. Uh, oh, and then he's talking about uh, the best rules, the early one for prostitutes that judge the world. I say, blow it out, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, okay. and here, Mercedes, blame you for meeting him again that way. <laughs> because the entire faculty at the studio school voted against having this guy hired. You hired him a month later. Anyway, there he was. Uh, in the uh, uh, basement kitchen. And he tells me, I've just come back from Texas. And I've seen the Rothko Chapel. And that religious feeling you get. Holy oh, shit, you know, how can... I mean, what is this guy? You know, it's crazy. You, 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 you look at Rawl, and, and by the way, Rawl, this Rawl, which is probably sometime in the early 30s, it's not a good slide in the sense that it's much too brown. It's cut brown over the years, I think. The, the, uh, Attitude toward it all among many of the young French people that I've met, and uh, young French uh, uh, curators and museums and critics, is just as bad as, as this, this former chairman I'm talking about. This, this idea of his religion and black minds and all the rest. But I always thought, you know, uh, action thing. Now, there's Howard Rosen thing. <laughs> Nothing about me. I mean, if, if Rock could say that, that, that a funny there, you know, wouldn't know a Rubens from a, a Giotto. Well, Harold wouldn't know a Norman Rocco from a Mugget. He really was nothing about me. He gave a stage of painting, didn't he? I mean, he coined the term action thing. I remember a, a, a crazy afternoon where I was getting some sort of eyes up for some sort of grant, and, and, and Meyer Shapiro comes to the studio with, 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 with Rosenberg. And even Shapiro, who's not that, you know, like a lot. I mean, even Shapiro turned to me when Rosenberg left and he said, well, yeah, he's, you know, wow. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, <laughs> the point is that this rule was done, was done before any of the New York school got out of their diapers, for Christ's sake. I mean, they weren't, you know, action painting. Bill Clinton coined his action thing. This rule, this, this thing with that Christ coming out like that. This place in the coming out of the belly down here, working in and out. What a painter rule it was. Let's let's look at two more. It's because he deserves some sort of looking at. Let's look at an early one and a late one. Now, a fallacy that all the other stories have come out of our rule is that he's expressionist. For Christ's sake. If you put him alongside of, of Kirchner or or or, or Schmidt Rotloff or or Beckmann or, or uh, Nolde. It's ridiculous. I mean, they always louse up the rhythm of their angles. Things get crowded and congealed, and they, they, they're sort of erratic. He is classical. Classical. Now, here's an early rule. And you can see right away, I mean, it, this this marine format, and these 
let's say the four elements of the of the buildings there, uh, these four warm, creamy elements that da, 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 goes up like that, rush there with a bit of an orange. They sit there, nestled in the fold of that hill, and he comes out with these trees. Now, how does he do that, man? This is, I'm sorry, the slide. That's the original slide. This is done from a bad thing in a book with a center spine. I can't help it. But what he does with the blacks, the blacks which don't come through the slide, they don't give a force of the blacks. But, you know, he gets this configuration built with the blacks, and then he comes in with that, that light, cool gray there. Cool, cool, cool here. And he moves back and forth. The whole thing is, is classical in its emphasis. And this lovely painting, very small, they're both fairly small. This painting is actually about, about that size. It, it, it still borders in the photo collection. Okay, right away. No expressionism. I, when I look at it, I think of the Fidel by Raphael at the Met. I think of that of the, of the agony in the garden by Raphael. I think of that, 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 that marvelous vertical of, 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 of the Christ in that yellow robe. I look at, at the way he establishes the water at his reflection and the folds of the hill and the way the horizon bubbles out there and this incredible sense of how it gets a beat through the whole painting. Now these paintings, as I said, were done when there's no such thing as abstract expressions of the painting made on the canvas and all the rest of this sort of garbage of Lord in Vogue magazine, but not in any serious art show, but now it's written as serious stuff, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's a great pity that 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 rule is as neglected as he is. I mean, there should be exhibitions of Rouault, particularly I love to see exhibition of the small paintings of Rouault. I never got to meet him during his lifetime, but twice I went to his studio, which was uh, en face de Guerre de Lyon, and he had a real dragon lady daughter who was a painter. She was tough. She had three daughters. And, and I was trying to get permission from her to go down and look at these marvelous, marvelous Rouault's the unfinished things that they left to the state. There was one exhibition of them, but ever since they've been locked, locked in the basement of museums, inns, you've got to get her permission to see them. I could never move her to do it. But I remember uh, on, on a, it was like a gloomy apartment with a long, dark foyer, which went right out to a room that overlooked the gas. And off that foyer was a little tiny room, and there's a plain deal table there, a wooden table, and rule would work on these these flat pieces of, of paper, actually, you paint on paper, they have them later mounted on canvas. And I thought, you know, ah, you know, it's too much. And then there was this easel that she had put up in the front room to display something, and she had this small wall, uh, uh, a landscape of around 1924. And I looked at that landscape, and oh, it was so solid, so terrific. And then I read this gruesome book by James Lord, which reports to be about about, about Giacometti, you know, as though he was under Giacometti's bed from the day Giacometti was born. You know, he met, he met Giacometti later than I did for Christ. <laughs> but in that book, he has Giacometti arrive in Paris in 1922, and the Lord says, and somehow when you read that book, it's as though Giacometti is agreeing with Lord the way he writes it. Shit, I agree with Lord at all that. He's arriving in Paris and he says, Rouault's best work is behind him. Matisse is doing these tame old lessons in the air. The Rand's work is way behind him. You know, all these things are tame. And I thought of that when I looked at that marvelous Rouault in, 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 in the apartment there. The next, please. Now, I'm going to give you some Duran. <laughs> Giacometti <laughs> talked about his first immediate viewing of the Duran around 19. 36 or 35 in the gallery. And he talked about, about some pears, some fruit against a vast dark background, and how suddenly he, he made a contact with Durant's work. Now, it, this kind of work, this, 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 this uh, 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 still life, is, is all about, well, I'd say it's done maybe in the late 20s, or maybe at the most, I'd say late 20s. And you can see how Durand begins to organize something here. Uh, uh, the, 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 the changes as he moves back and forth. If, 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 if you see these, that little light wedge up there, and how that thing sort of grows, 
stage where it should stay. The, 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 the lights on the fruits, the darks, the changes, the changes from what happens here to what happens here. All around, he's, he's finding something about these objects. This sort of thing excited Jacques and immensely. And I want to show you this, which is from a, a reproduction of book, and this is from the original. To give you an idea of the quality of, 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 of the, 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 the feeling of Duran. Now, one thing the art historians are always saying about Duran, you know, he did his own paintings, he was part of modern art, prismatic color, you know, uh, uh, he puts down a red, and he puts the green next to it, he puts the yellow, and he puts the violet next to it. If you put a blue, then he has an answer with an orange. Great. You know, Duran finally said, you know, for the shit out of me. I said, you know, uh, a, 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 a pure of a million remains a poor pure of a million. A pure lemon yellow remains a pure lemon yellow. It's not droll at all, he said, you know. You know, <laughs> it's no kicks. Uh, but the art historian, that's my art. My art. My art. My art. Instead, what he does, he develops <laughs> something in his color, which is so, so marvelously rich and, 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 and powerful in range. Because really, what does color mean? Color isn't a question of whether you use, I have a colleague, a, a dear colleague that used to teach at the school. We always would argue, would argue about things like color. And uh, he's a man I respect very much, and now he's making a success, and thank God he deserves it. But we would argue about color. Uh, uh, and, and his idea of color was that color started with the Impressionists. But of course, if you challenged him and said, hey, man, come on, where is Goya? Uh, hey, man, come on, where is Titian? He'd have to back up. <laughs> because color, obviously, isn't a question of prismatic color, which can be marvelous paintings of prismatic color. It's, it's a question of, of the hierarchy of the color planes, the rhythm to establish with the color planes. How, how, how you set that rhythm up will create a light or won't create a light on your canvas. And, and, and of course, what Duran wanted was, was, was as Jacques Demetri put it so beautifully, to get some, some, some echo of that glimpse of the miraculous surroundings of appearances in the world around them. Now, let's go on to two more here. 